But you know what? That's not cool enough. Because it doesn't look real, right? It doesn't look realistic. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to do new, solid. We're going to create a, a basically a glow layer. So here we got the uh, this yellow layer. I'm going to press T so we can kind of make it uh, half opaque here. And what I'm going to do is take this Bezier brush here. Please don't come out, copy. Please don't come out. I'm going to trace around where I think light would fall if that actually happened. That's pretty good. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another mask for this uh, stuff inside here. And now with the second mask, I'm going to subtract. So subtract. Boom! And uh, I'm going to feather both these. Press M twice and you get all these options. Since both of them are selected, I, if I move one of them, the other one should feather as well. So there, that's pretty good. I'm just going to change this mode to screen. And I'm just going to take down the opacity a little bit. So like there. So what uh, this looks like is a, it's almost like a dynamic light effect. Um, it's pretty good. <laughs> we can change the, uh, let me just do what color burn looks like. That's kind of interesting too. So here's uh, without and with. So you can kind of colorize them a little bit. Maybe we can do both these. Uh, I'm going to do another blending mode on top that's going to be a screen. Just really take down, uh, whoa, that looks terrible. Before and after. Uh, a little bit of dynamic lighting. Um, it works better if you actually draw this well. Uh, <laughs> so like if I actually spent the time and like really cut out uh, the figure. Um, actually, you know, I'm going to see if I can find some footage of, uh, of this in practice. What did I just get rid of? Mostly when he's punching people in the face. So there, you see the light on him? I'm gonna play the effect. The, we didn't actually light them on the day, so I had to light them in post. So here, when he first gets hit, there's a bit of a flare. But you can see right here, what I did is I basically traced his body where I think the light would fall, did a blending mode on it. I did a screen blending mode on a blue layer. I just animated over time so it would fade out. Um, I didn't even bother with this one because I was like, yeah, screw it. <laughs> but uh, there's, a, there's a few times in here when, uh, when we had to do that, uh, like just dynamic lighting. It's better if you light it on the day though, for sure. Okay, so uh, that's, uh, that's interactive uh, light stuff, tutorial stuff. Lighting modes, use them all the time, no excuse. All right. Do, 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 do. Okay, let's do some gunshot. So I'm just going to kind of zip through this video. Same thing I just did with you guys here. Um, we have the uh, footage from Dead Nation Films, um, and then we basically put it for the gunshots. And then to kind of sweeten the effect, on from that. I drew a pretty cool mask here, so I'm going to show you my mask. I'm pretty proud of it. Yeah, check out this mask I drew. Pretty quick, too. Look at me. I'm just going, oh, there's a leaf. Oh, there's a leaf. Oh, boom! <laughs> so there, to create a little bit more. And this is from Barry's film, Squadron 5. Let's hear it for so dynamic lighting, pretty cool. Uh, I, I recommend it. Wow, um, you're learning twice as fast now. <laughs> Zipping through it. All right, so uh, oh, why did I do that? Here's the, uh, the the most important slide, the one I just created. This shows you the zen of compositing. Thank you. So compositing is additive. Um, what we if we want to get rid of something we're adding something on top that looks like it should be underneath. Makes sense? So like, yeah, basically to get rid of stuff, um, you want to use like the clone stamp or, uh, or, or whatever. Oh, I didn't put in a boom removal tutorial? Well, I guess I'm just gonna have to do that right now. <laughs> Who's ready to get rid of some booms? All right, boom removal. Good thing I made a folder for it. Okay, so let's see which footage we want to do. There's this moving footage in which you got this crazy... What is that? What is this thing? I don't know what it is. Or we could get rid of something much easier. I think I'll just show you this one. There's a boom in there. What is that doing in there? Yeah, let's do the hard one. Let's do the hard one. Because uh, my track record again is so good today. Um, put this in here. Creates a new composition of that setting. And the trick is we need to find a spot 
in the composition when that thing is not in there, right? If it is in there the whole time, you're gonna have to use the clone stamp. Um, so let's see, I'm just gonna go back here. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I don't know if I can see everything. Do, 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 do. All right, so actually, you know what? I'm not even, I'm just gonna, since the ceiling is so uniform, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy paste. I'm gonna right click on this, time, I just froze the time on that. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this section of roof here and let's move it over. Oh, I guess problem solved. Problem solved, everyone. I guess I'm just going to go home. Uh, the problem is, though, that it's not going to stay like that, right? It's uh, this footage moves around, so we're going to have to do some motion tracking. Oh my god, motion tracking. So whenever you don't have a shot that's locked down, you need to do motion tracking. Now, I'm going to get into motion tracking in the next slide, but I'm just going to do a little tiny, uh, I'm going to show you what it looks like before we, we actually talk about it formally. If you don't see the tracker in this bottom corner here, go Window Tracker. So I'm going to choose to track the motion. No, what? Shut up. Uh, I'm going to track this layer and uh, just going to extend this out. What we're going to track is um, a point that's unique. We can't just track this because the computer's going to be like, what, where'd it go? What is it? What am I looking for? So we're going to actually track this thing. Makes sense. It's on the roof. Why not? Okay, good. I'm going to create a new null object. And what null objects are is basically they don't render out. They're like controllers, like puppet strings. So I'm going to edit the target that this tracking data is going to go to. I'm going to say, yo, tracking data, I want you to hit up this null over here, okay? So it goes, okay. And so that means any tracking information I do is going to go be attached to the new null I created. So let's just, uh, now that I have my tracking point set, I'm pretty good to go. Let's just uh, press play. Oh my god, this is so slow. <laughs> and what it does is it analyzes frame by frame by frame. And uh, it's going to take that information when I press apply, send it X and Y over to the null. So if I open up the null, if you look at the position, it looks like this many keyframes. You can see the little null is moving along. It's kind of tracking with the roof, right? Kind of moving with our footage a little bit. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this parent option. And remember this layer that we created? This the just a copy of the roof. We're going to take that one parent it to the null, and that means uh, whenever the null object moves, see how the, the roof moved there for a second, like that, that roof layer? I'll solo it so you can see it. It's basically moving, the idea is that it's moving at the same rate as the footage. See how it's moving around? So that's why you use motion tracking. You motion track the original footage, you choose a distinct point, you copy that information over to a null, and then anything that you want to move with the footage, like say this layer here, you parent it by using this little whip to that. You tell it what layer it wants to get all of its, uh, its tracking information from. It's, it's moving around information. And since it says keyframes on, like I could take this null object, let's actually take a look at it. I can move it way over here, right? See how the actual other layer goes as well? I can move this layer independently, but uh, when it comes to that null, it'll do whatever the null wants to do. So parenting, very important uh, with tracking. Sound cool? <coughs> it does, yeah. Tracking also, uh, parenting works for uh, rotating, and that's very important for puppets. Uh, I'll get into puppet stuff later. But when you're tracking stuff, let's go to track motion here. Uh, you can choose different track options. You can choose rotation, scale. Um, you can't do 3D tracking, it's because it's only tracking a point. Um, but there are 3D trackers out there, they're just very scary. And uh, you shouldn't cross the street um, without looking both ways. <clears throat> OK, so let's uh, take another thing here. We're going to actually use the clone stamp tool, because this is one of my favorite things, right? This is how you make zipper models happen, uh, clone stamp. <clears throat> That's Photoshop too. Cool. Um, so now if we double click on this footage, clone stamp it up, grab this guy. This window is where our boom pole is. Oh. Gonna click on this window because there's no boom, right? If you hold down option or whatever, it chooses what point to start at. Just start up painting it out. Whoa! That looks pretty good, I guess. 
I don't know, you can also do something like this too. Whoa! So there, I just got rid of the boom pole. It's gone forever. Oh, jeez. But you can see that there's a problem, right? When something passes in front of that spot I sampled, like Dylan's hand, it actually appears there. So what you could do is, um, it'd probably be a better idea to just like use that, uh, the trick that I did with the first footage, which is, I'm gonna get rid of that clone stamp uh, layer. Let's just go with that. Get rid of the paint. Boom, gone. Uh, copy and paste this layer. And I'm gonna take this uh, Bezier brush. Always the Bezier brush. I'm making a shape. Ugh. Okay, choose this and uh, grab that window, like so, and just move that layer right there. And that's it. So um, this footage should be pretty good. Since it's a locked off camera, no problems, no track. But you can imagine if we did have the track, we just throw it on a tracker and then attach this layer, which again is a layer that looks like just the window that's covering up. See, it's adding over this one. Um, that's how you get rid of booms and stuff. Uh, you have to find an area that's kind of similar to what you're trying to um, get rid of. In this case, it was really easy because we had this window right here. But uh, sometimes you might have to bring it into Photoshop and actually create an element, like map paint. Like if I wanted to get rid of her, I'd have to like probably map paint what I think the building would look like behind her by using the clone stamp. All right, cool, huh? So motion tracking. This is a still from Chance Laser Cowboy. Who was on Chance Laser Cowboy? Ace, that's two for two. And uh, good job, Nancy. Where's Felix? He was on that one. He left. <laughs> okay, so with motion tracking, what you want? Uh, it looks like you're trying to get uh, cloak. Oh. Need any help? No, we're not trying to get cloak. Shots, 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 shots. Oh yeah! Oh. Hey, you guys want to go clubbing? <laughs> no, copy. We're doing. I can do anything I want. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, man. Me. Always ruining my presentation. Okay. I'll get you next time, Compy. Next time, Compy. <laughs> Who loves Shallow Depth the Field? Yeah. Motion tracking does not. Oh. Yeah. So the thing is, you want sharp areas, right? You can imagine the computer kind of gets confused when it's a little bit fuzzy. It wants like a really contrasty area. So that's why we put down these amazingly sharp, well-spaced motion tracker points. <laughs> Basically, this is the point that's looking for, but really it's anything inside this box. So if, what we do is take this motion tracker, put it over one of those areas. This area outside is where After Effects is going to look for that point. So say if you're doing the born identity and your camera's going, Whoa! you want this box to be really big because that point in one frame can move from over here to over here really fast. So this bounding box, the second one, is where that point, uh, where After Effects is going to look for that point. So again, the more distinct the point is, especially if you have shaky born identity camera, uh, it's gonna be very hard to track. Does that make sense? Yeah. Great, cool stuff. Oh, this is gonna be some fun stuff. Two and a half D, all right. So, uh, can everyone read this? Most of these images are from Photoshop Friday. This says uh, Screaming Child Air Airways. My favorite airways. <laughs> So 3D and After Effects is basically planes. Um, it's not like polygons, like Cinema 4D or 3DS Max or Maya or whatever. This is doing 3D space, but it's doing it with planes. So uh, I don't know if any of these notes are bored. Yeah, OK. The Enable 3D button is the most important thing you want to get out of this. You see that little box that looks like it's kind of like those 3D boxes you drew in sixth grade? Uh, that's, that's the button that enables 2.5D mode. <laughs> That button, right there. <laughs> All right, let's do a 3D set. Oh, I wonder, I've forgotten what I planned for this already. This is great. <laughs> it's like Christmas every, uh, every five minutes. Oh, cool, okay. Indonesian shadow puppets. <laughs> Why not? All right, okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new composition. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this tree and we're gonna put it in there. There you go. Just gonna scale this bad boy down. And uh, we're gonna click on this little guy so we get this uh, box. Because normally what it is choosing either the blending modes or the track mat, or uh, if you have these other options like say motion blur, or this one here is the 3D option. Now I can push it back in space. <laughs> 